Hey there, some creators, Mr. Hansen back with another video. We are now on topic seven, which is all about probability. So for these notes, we're actually, for the first time this year, gonna take them in our workbooks, all right? So on page 356 in your workbook is where you're gonna find these examples. Not a lot to go through in this video, so make sure that you fill these out in your workbook. That's where we're looking to stamp off your notes. So here we go. Our essential question is, what is probability, all right? So, example one in your workbooks says that Alyssa and Cherry spin the pointer to the right, which has colors blue, red, green, yellow, and record the color that it lands on. The table shows the results after 100 spins. How can Alyssa and Cherry explain their results? All right, so we're looking at 100 spins of the, that spinner over here, and the frequency means how many times that it landed on that color. All right. So landed on red 23, yellow 24, green 27, and blue 26 for a total of 100 spins. <clears throat> so there are four possible results or what we call outcomes. So outcomes are results of an experiment. When Alyssa and Cherry spin the pointer, the pointer can land on the red, the yellow, the green, or the blue. Each section is the same size, so they're divided into four sections all four are the exact same size. Each of the four outcomes is equally likely because they are the same size, all right? If, for example, the red was one half, then it wouldn't be equally as likely because red would be half of it while the other colors would be either a fourth or even less, okay? <clears throat> now, each time they spin the pointer, the likelihood or probability is what we call it, <clears throat> of the pointer landing on red, yellow, green, or blue is the same because they're the same size. Can't stress that enough. If they're not the same size, they are not equally likely. Each of the equal size sections is shaded one of those four colors, so the probability of landing it is one out of four or one fourth. So for probability, we're gonna be using a lot of fractions, right? So since one fourth we know is 25%, we can also write probability as a percent. So probability is gonna be either written as a fraction or a percentage all the time. So looking at these four colors again, the pointer should land on each color about one out of four times or about 25 times out of 100 spins. And if we looked at our results, that's what we ended up getting. So it'd be one fourth, which is equal to 25% of the time. Right? So it's important to know that if they're all the same size, red was one color out of the four equally divided colors, which is 25%. Okay? So, in this example, the triad, <clears throat> how might the probability of the pointer in this example land on a given color change from the spinner before? All right? So, if I look at this one, Okay, I have the same four colors, red, blue, green, and yellow, but now they're divided up into smaller sections. So I have two red out of eight. So I have two eighths for each one, which if I simplify it is still one fourth. So technically nothing changed. All they did was took the colors and kind of divided them up on the opposite sides of each other instead of putting one whole fourth of a section together. So, how would the probability of the pointer land on a given color change if the spinner had six equal size sections with each section a different color? Well, if I have six colors, here I had four colors. So I can only have four possible outcomes, right? Either red, green, yellow, or blue. Here, if I have six colors, and they're all equal size sections, my probability turns into one six. So my chance of it happening lowers a little bit, all right? Example two, now we're looking at using the probability and likelihood to describe situations. So we have a six-sided cube here, number cube, or die if you will. It says Terry is gonna roll that number cube with the size label one to six. Question A says, what is the probability that she will roll a two? So because there's only one side that has a two on it out of the six, her probability is one sixth, all right? 
So that's what the chance of that happening is. And it's equal for all the numbers because each side has a different number. Question B says, what's the probability that you roll a number less than seven? Well, all six numbers on a number cube or die are less than seven. So you would say six out of six or one, or you could even write it as a percentage and say, yeah, it's 100% chance it's gonna happen because everything is less than seven. Question C says, what is the probability that she will roll a number greater than six? Well, none of the numbers are greater than six, so we could say zero or 0% 0 chance or not likely at all, right? Again, for the triad example, now we have a number cube here with 12 sides labeled one to 12. So if I have 12 sides and I want the number 11, 11 is one side out of the 12. So that would be its probability or fraction. What's the probability of rolling a number greater than five? <clears throat> now, here's where it changes because now I have several numbers greater than five. There's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. That's seven out of the 12 sides. So I put seven out of the 12. So when you write probability as a fraction, it's the number of desired over the total number of outcomes. And question C, <clears throat> what's the probability of rolling a number greater than 12? Well, are there any numbers greater than 12? No, 12 is the greatest, so we would say 0% chance of it happening. It's impossible. All right, last example, here we go. Examining fairness for probability. So, <clears throat> Marisol designed a spinner for a game, labeled the sections as follows, D, A, E, A, B, and C. The spinner is fair if there is an equal chance for the pointer to land on each number, or in this case, letter is a spinner a fair spinner well we have as you can see six equal sections but there's one letter that has two sections the rest just have one so the probability of the pointer landing on a is two out of six where all the rest are one out of six so is it fair no it's not because that's one third out of the entire thing where the rest are just the sixth probability of landing on pointer b like i said is one sixth each one for C and D and E are also one six, so A has a greater chance. So it's more likely that the pointer will land on A than any other letter. So no, it's not a fair spinner. Example three here. <clears throat> we have a spinner that's got three colors, red, blue, and white. They wanna know, is this spinner a fair spinner? Well, clearly it's not. We would say no, because if I look, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sections, five of which, so five out of ten are blue, which is one half, right? So it says, describe a change that could make the spinner fair. <clears throat> well, we need all of them to be the same amount. So I need at least a couple more of these to be white. So if I took away two blue, and made these two white, that would be equal to blue, but now red has four. So with 10, we can't divide 10 equally into thirds, all right? So the way we can make this fair is if we divided it into eight sections or something that can be divided by three, like maybe nine sections or six or three sections, we cannot do it with an even number, 10, 8, 6, or excuse me, 10, 8, 4, or 2, all right? So no, it's not fair, five halves are blue. We would have to change it so that they all have the same equal number of sections of the same color, all right? So that's what probability is. It's just looking at different experiments, seeing, hey, if, what's the fairness? What's the likely of it happening? And writing it as a fraction of percent. We'll see you next time.